luck, you can fly. Maybe I've just created a bird. In the last video, I showed you this bead locking alloy wheel design that I came up with. And it does work, it holds the tire onto the alloy. Uh, but we're still left with this issue of tire ballooning. Ultimately, I think it just boils down to the fact that these tires are cheap and they're not designed to run anywhere near this RPM range. So I decided to move on and buy a pro grade set of wheels. After doing a bit of research, I went for these belted pro line trenchers. These things are awesome. They're rated up to around 75 miles per hour or 5,000 RPM. And I've already tested them and there is no ballooning at all. I will say I haven't yet given up on the previous wheel. What I plan to do is add a little valve on there and try and pump it with air. I just want to see what happens. It probably won't work, but I'm just curious. The Proline trenchers come with these little hub adapters and basically it allows you to adjust the offset of the wheel or change them out for a different type of coupling. For example, this is your standard sort of hex coupling. You can see that it just slots in from the back and then you bolt it on from the front and that way you can couple to whichever type of axle you want. This is actually very handy because I'm going to have to design my own. So if you remember from before, my motor has this little fixture that attaches to it and it basically allows you to couple to the wheel using these four bolts. So I'm going to have to design my own little attachment piece that I can bolt to the wheel and the motor. So I grabbed my favourite tool which is Fusion 360 and I was able to design something like this. It's quite straightforward, follows the same profile as the ones that came with the wheels but obviously I've adjusted it for my particular fixture. I was then able to 3D print these on my Creality CR10S and before you know it, just like magic, I've got a brand new coupler. So these are the two side by side, you can see the difference. The print was a draft print and it required supports which are always tricky in PETG so it doesn't look too great but functionality wise it's perfect. You can see that I can just easily slot that straight in just like the other ones and when you look at it from the front you can see I've now got those four bolts for me to attach to the motor. Now I had to think about designing a new suspension arm. So if we look at the last setup, this is what I had. So you can see we've got the knuckle on the end there and I had the motor mounted higher up the suspension arm. Obviously this time we're mounting the motor directly inside the wheel. So I'm gonna to have to move that motor attachment further down the arm. Again, I went back into Fusion 360 and you can see I've managed to put together a draft of the rear subframe. And this is mainly gonna be an electronics test rig. I just wanna see how it behaves and how it feels you know in, in the real world. So I exported all the files, got them sliced, sent them to my 3D printer and now I'll let you watch a time lapse of me building the rear subframe. Okay, so here's the rear subframe design, printed and built. And honestly, for a first draft, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I've, I've gained a good sort of feel for how things are gonna fit together, how the suspension behaves, and overall it's just given me a better idea for when I actually design the final car and build that. I'm quite happy with how the wheels sit in regard to the camber, so I actually designed it so that they do sit flat like this, but obviously, I don't have the rest of the car attached to it and there's gonna be more weight attached to that. So until you really know how the overall car sits once it's all built, you can't really explore this yet. So once I've got the whole car, I can look further into setting the camber and hopefully keep keeping it at a zero. One thing I do wanna change is the position of the shocks. 
So obviously now I don't have any rods or axles moving through the centre of the suspension arm. So I want to move them into the centre and that's just a case of mounting them on the other side here and moving this shock mount back a little bit. But I think that'll be a lot more stable. Um, and when you lift it up you can actually see sometimes when you ramp the motors up as well you can see it twisting toward the end where the shock isn't mounted. So I think it's a good idea to put that in the middle. The main reason I printed this for the moment is just to be an electronics test rig. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be hooking everything up to the STM32 board. If you follow up my version one car, you'll know what that's all about. If not, you can go back and look at those videos. But to put it simply, what I'll be doing is reading the receiver signals into this board and then using the chip and some programming to control the output to the ESCs and the motors. And I think now it's really clear to see that with individual control over each wheel on the car, I'm gonna be able to do some really cool stuff with this STM32. And I'm super excited to go into that and to share that with you guys as well. So in terms of what's next, well, the next week or two, I'm gonna be working on all this electronic stuff and mostly just the software side of the project. So once all that's done, I'll have another update and I can show you some of this stuff running and I'm excited for that. Hopefully you're enjoying this project as much as me, but until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.